Uh, yeah, Kevin Perlman for Seymour Amster. Yeah. And your name would be? Uh, Kevin Perlman. Hi, how can you handle all these right now? Come down right now. Uh, okay. Yes. Yeah. Very good. Hi. Hi, oh, you didn't tell me Deborah was showing up. Yeah, maybe that's just okay. I'll put them back up. <laughs> They're going to wear my, um, I'm wearing, hi, I'm wearing my Unabomber and Vegas shooter shirt. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, you know what, I'm not going to get a comment on that. Because, <laughs> you know, do people that wear these things, shirts like this, are definitely, like, about to, like, blow up football stadium. <laughs> I'm so out of the loop, I did not know this was the fashion of the uh, so It's the like heaven fun fashion, which, <laughs> don't, my father has a thing with fun, it's like anti-fun man, but. Okay, uh, well, <laughs> cool watch. Oh, yeah, thank you, know, my watch. Yeah, is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I'm out of loop. <laughs> Seymour invited me because he said there were developments, so I'm here oh, There's to developments every minute of every day, yeah. All right, so as I kind of mentioned to you on um, last time we talked, so um, the Starbucks incident um, that did involve the accident allegedly occurred on December 30th, 2018. And No, I have not seen it. No, I didn't. Oh, I sent. I texted you and I emailed you. No, it doesn't. Doesn't come. You, it didn't come through. So that. It's. You didn't. That's what I want to do. I want to play the video. Oh well, it's on YouTube. So if you're on the internet. I'm on the internet right now. Uh. Okay, so what should I go to? Uh, go let's, to let's see if I can look in your text here to get the exact. Um. Hey, Seymour. Here we go. Yeah, so I did not. Yeah. Clicking the link in your text. So I don't have a. Let me, let me see if I have. I don't have internet. Uh. Oh, okay. It's in, is it in the text? Yeah, that's the link to it. Oh, here it is. Okay. All right. Let me see if I can. I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Oh, he's. Oh, yeah. Just, and here's no. just just. For you. Is, What's this? This is about another thousand public incidences all over Thousand Oaks and Camarillo and uh, San Diego and public restaurants, Recent? coffee shops. Oh yeah, recently, even as back as yesterday and every single day going back. Okay, so you um, recorded it all. Oh yeah, it all okay. is. And that's okay. what they're still mad about. And there's some good... We'll add it to the list. Yeah, oh, and there's a ton of FBI calls, um, internal affairs calls, all recorded. Um, wow. Showing that I'm documenting and telling them everything the police are doing to me as they do it. Right. Um, so there's no dispute here. It's right. just because I'm being censored. Right. Whatever the deal is, clearly. Well, that's about what I know. Yeah. You know, people generally don't tell high school <laughs> teachers to tell the students to punch other students to try to make them look like violent parents. Right. <laughs> no, not usually. What. Um, is there audio with the video? Oh, yeah. There's audio and in, even interviews with my therapist talking about um, everything on the clip saying Kevin is not what they're saying, blah, blah. Right. <laughs> Okay. Um, so this is the same therapist you've been, you've been seeing since the last time? Uh, since so Christina Vescovo. So it did not come through the exact way I wanted. Is it labeled in some way? Can you find it? Yeah. Um.
Sometimes it always lags. An hour long. Well, what part of the video would be the part where you're talking to any Starbucks employee? Where would that start? Um, it's probably three quarters. But Seymour was supposed to watch this last night because oh, it well, has it's more, it's, okay, so it's more the entire parking lot. So well, we got day. time for that yeah. later. But All right, so I don't care about your conversations with Brittany. I know. I'm trying to fix your volume. Yeah. Wait a second, wait a second. That's uh, only 100,000 for IT work. Okay, alright. So now, take us to, take us to the incident. The first thing you'll notice is there's two bay alarm uh, signs, which is strange. Whoa, it sounds like, I think there's a, there's a unit 12. I think there's a second browser one. Let's just start. Stop. Let's just walk. Uh, I'm about to walk in right now. Okay. Two Prius owners park two Priuses together forwards at this Ralph's, just like the Ralph's in Encino, right? Um, okay. And also, you just heard someone uh, push their water button twice uh, working on me. Smiling and peace with the, uh, you're managing it and your client can be uh, anywhere uh, at a Starbucks, coffee bean, Pete's, or any other public place in the world. Do you gonna have your banana? For some reason. Oh. Um, they are going to kill you. Once again, reason. at the third location, um, within an hour, um, showing that uh, there's a mass conspiracy. Right? And it is. That's where any call is people saying man over and over, right? Something that's now been going Wait, on. Can we pause for a minute because I got a question? So, oh, man, Remember, by the time you're walking next, away, you have what you purchased, right? Correct, yeah. Because okay. um, okay. there was so little, little interaction when you made the purchase. Correct. That, did you even buy anything? I mean, it's so. Yeah, no, what I did, see, here's what they're mad about. Um, every first, remember that these tactics, as I'm sure you've seen from all my other videos, are in the thousands. But this few days, even though it's been going on for a year and a half with the man tactic, 
each place, restaurants, coffee shops, each person kept saying, man, to try to provoke me in anger and rage. So I decided this night, it will last the two days that I would record each place I went, and I went this night to five random Starbucks and coffee beans or wherever, just different places, and for that length of time. And each place said, man, to me, proving it on video. So they got mad because they're on video accessories to murder. Let's call it what it is. And um, because they know they're caught with their whatever, hand in the cookie jar, whatever you want to say, um, they called up their buddy Dincy with their murder crew and neighborhood stalking murder watch group. And Dincy is running around going, well, now Kevin, because Kevin is the next Vegas shooter, has threatened to kill all Starbucks customers right. because Dincy doesn't want the truth coming out because right. he's running for city council. Which location? Uh, Winneka. This is Winneka. So you don't right. have Encino on This is the one. I have her on this thing picking up the phone no. and calling. No, no. Do you have the interaction in Encino? There is no Encino. I sat outside no, no, in Encino. It's, it's not Encino we're oh, worried about. Oh, which one is it? Um, Woodland Hills or Winneka. Oh, uh, it's this one. Yeah. yeah. All right, so let's keep... Okay. So okay. you said we're going to have the interaction. Well, that was that's the, the interaction. That was it. You just saw it. I threatened, supposedly I threatened to kill all Starbucks customers, and I'm the next Vegas shooter in Unabomber. Correct right. me if I'm wrong, but all I heard you say after you walked away from the cashier. I'm talking to the camera as I'm walking. Yeah. And yeah. so But you never, I didn't hear you say to the cashier that you were, were going to kill anybody. Of course. So no, no, of course not. Welcome to 42 years of my life. Yeah. So, <laughs> right? You know, what's going on? Well, there's obviously a line of communication telling people at certain locations, if Kevin comes here, do these things or don't do these things, um, showing uh, mass communication to stalk and terrorize and torture and kill someone since five years old. Um, and there's about 15 incidences in this uh, one lot alone, which, shit, if you watch the video. Lights on. Uh, That's oh, question. I can give you whatever you need. I have over 10 car terabytes. Backwards here. Uh, car backwards here. Uh, I see they all look like they mostly have plates, though, which is interesting. Because I just came out of the Encino town, whatever. And... Uh, Encino Town Center, and you saw the amount of cars with no plates, right? Uh, now, for some reason, these cars mostly have plates. This one doesn't right here. Um, and we have a guy waiting backwards. Two cars. This car waiting backwards, and that car waiting backwards with the lights on. Um, but... Uh, I think all these cars actually have plates. And if you see my other videos, there's like tons of cars here with no plates. So now we're getting closer to where I live. They're still doing the cars backwards, but there's tons of cars. Now they all have plates, right? I mean, if you look at my video, every single lot I go, go into around here, um, 40% don't have plates in the lots. You know, some, some huge, insane number like this, right? Um, now, remember, the tactics keep changing from thing to thing, just until I'm dead and gone. Um, so let's go in here and get order something and um, see how they treat me for simply going in and giving them my money, right? Um, like all other locations on the planet. Okay, so before I walk in, I want you to see the pairs of twos backwards. Um, and then over here, we actually have two um, Priuses backwards, or two Priuses forwards together, right? So, um, two Prius owners parked two Priuses together forwards at this Ralph's, just like the Ralph's in Encino, right? Um, also, you just heard someone uh, put their water back in place, uh, working on me.
He's also making reference to the things. Okay, so this guy also said man, like the other places, right? Showing, and a piece, showing that there is a mass communication. There is. And so the scams of the Starbucks Corporation with the... Um, with the, uh, you're managing it, and your client can't be um, anywhere um, at a Starbucks, Coffee Bean, Pete's, or any other public place in the world because we're going to kill you for some reason. Um, you've just seen once again at the third location um, within an hour um, showing that uh, there's a mass conspiracy. Right, and this time tonight is people saying man over and over, right? Something that's now been going on for there's clear audio after this with a different audio. So okay, if you want to hear. the day we so what's in the report uh, is what the staff says. Yeah, it's all yeah, well, hearsay, it's just fabrications. What they're so good at. So, what's the other audio that you're saying is in there? Then I say something about uh, it's right after this. This is like goes a couple seconds, I think. It's the same. It's just a clear, it's a clear, so you can see, it's clear audio of, of the employee's uh, voice, that's what it is. Oh, right, I suppose this. Now remember the Encino, let's see if they're Lyft drivers. Um, remember the Encino? No, he's not a Lyft driver, and he's not a Lyft driver. So remember, oh, now we have a car that's pulled up, look backwards with his lights on towards the route. Okay, so remember the Encino, Someone parked a Prius and then a Lyft driver went to, a Lyft driver went to, um, he parked next to him waiting for me and he never left his car. He was sort of lying down in the seat and so um, he was lying down. Oh, now we have the girl on the phone all nervous as if, um, oh my God, you know, how dare he? Right? And then over here, it looks like we have, I don't know, they look like they're somewhere, but I can't tell. Okay, so, um, okay, so my point is that, um, Okay, so my point is that that Lyft driver showed up um, strategically um, because they were sort of profiling or he might go into the routes, right? And so they show up in their cars with these strategic mental illness tactics, right? Now the girl in the Starbucks freaked out on the phone, but you know, uh, we all make choices in life and the choice to take part in hunting down and trying to kill someone and going there, this and there, that, and try justifying it, um, is the wrong choice. Do you go and back and show choice. show it again or not? Because no, there's. Just, I think you passed it. I think it's right when I walk out of the door, it shifts right? to an audio That's clip. That's the correct choice. It is unacceptable to get... Uh, Before... Let me see. Uh, go right when I'm walking out of the door and let it play. Backwards here, then it. You don't know, you don't know. Oh, yeah. No one should hear. So, what do you think your agenda is? Are you. Sit. We have a guy. I'm waiting. How they. Treat me. Uh, okay. Over, right? It goes from May one. Well, thank you. All express.
You really have to watch it from the beginning. Okay, um, here's, okay, number one. You need to give me uh -huh. a tape of the incident and nothing else. None of oh, the commentaries, sure. nothing else except the commentaries that are on the tape. That's Wait. number one. Oh, you mean no text or? No text, no nothing, raw tape, period. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Now, okay. Yes, there's the one response where you say they're trying to kill me. Yes. And yeah, where he's not looking at, he wouldn't be looking at anybody. He'd be walking out the front door. And I'm holding a camera like this. Okay. And here's, I'm smiling and going, peace right. to the guy. Here's, <laughs> okay, here's my point. Here's where I'm at. <clears throat> you have been convicted of criminal threats. Yes, I know that. You are on probation. Mm -hmm. That means you no longer have a right to a jury. Mm -hmm. A judge can determine that you're in violation of probation. Correct, yes. And it doesn't even have to be um, doing another criminal threat to find you in violation of probation. It could even be harassing people or disturbing the peace. Mm -hmm. And I gotta tell you something right now. A smart judge could find you walking in, doing what you did, disturbing the peace. And that in and of itself could get you three or four years in jail. What do you mean a smart judge? When I say smart, I don't mean it in the term of smart good. I mean it in the term of smart getting what they want. Yeah, well, that's not smart, that's just... Devious? Okay. Correct, yeah, well, correct. a dumb devious judge might not... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> might miss it. Yeah. <laughs> no, listen, you, listen, a judge doesn't have to have any of this. He could just go out like Evan and he could throw me in. Um, I mean, that's the reality well, of the situation. Wait, but wait, I'm my because you know, what I do here, what I do at Olive is uh -huh. help people avoid jail time. Yeah. That's my well, job. How do you avoid so, jail time where you're being attacked by each and every oh, person I, you're in contact with? I game the system. You were? I game the system. Okay, well, the, my point okay, is... Well, let, me, let me step back. I'm time. hearing three or four years. Yeah. Let, me, let, me step, okay. me. let me step back and say what my position is. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, one. 
Do I feel that this report is accurate that you threatened to kill everybody? Of course everybody? it's not. Why don't you hear my opinion? I already know you're going to say it's not, but go ahead. You better be nice for you to hear. Okay. <laughs> no. Okay? I don't think you did. Um, is it possible that they misinterpreted it? Maybe. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> uh huh. Go ahead. Fine. Sorry. Is it more probable that they wanted to figure out a way to get you the hell out of the store? Yeah. Have they exaggerated? Yeah. Time out. Not store. Planet. Well, well okay. <laughs> you and I are never going to agree on that point completely. Well, okay? really, we're wise. Well, I, 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 see, okay. I don't see how you cannot. But, but, under okay. But, Kevin, <laughs> I don't want to say something to you that is not truthfully how I believe. Okay? Well, I just don't understand how you can be, like, the only one uh, on the planet that doesn't know what's I, going on. Okay, and maybe I'm <laughs> the only one on the planet who doesn't know, but I'm still going <laughs> to. Okay, all right, maybe there's two. Okay, but I'm still, when I say something to you, uh -huh. it's going to be absolutely accurate from my point of view. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, okay, so, well, clearly, let's put this. Would Starbucks like to figure out a way to remove you from coming into their stores and not being a hassle? Yes. Would Sean Dempsey like to figure out a way of removing you from his community, because he sees it's his community, so you're not his hassle? Yes. Fine. Could I get those parts. Yeah, but this isn't just Starbucks. It's every I'll, single thing. I get that. I want to do all the things. Kevin, Kevin, it's just about this. Kevin, I'm pinpointing right now. This is harm's way. This is danger. I can't avoid the harm's way because it's in every place just I go me, into. Just hear me Perhaps. out right now. Just hear me out. Okay? Mm -hmm. Harm's way. You're looking at every single place. I'm talking about this piece of paper. No, I know that, but, okay. but the so, reason so, that piece of paper exists is because nobody thinks that each and every person I have contact with is setting me up with the government and police. That's the fucking problem. And we're not going to be able to convince a judge. the judge. Of course not, because the judge, at first the judge already knows, and they want me dead and gone. Okay, we all know that. So, so what's our response is yeah. the question. So, can, okay, so we can agree with this. There's only so much you can do in the courtroom. I, I understand what okay, you're saying. Okay, so we can agree with this. We can agree that even though we're all in agreement you did not do a criminal threat, mm -hmm. that we're all in agreement that you're at extreme risk of the judge finding you in violation of probation mm -hmm. and throwing you into jail. Yeah. Okay, then let's go from there. Or longer than I thought would be possible. Yeah, I mean, okay, the problem with Mr. How is it four years, four to five? It's probably seven. Because seven years? There's no actual crime anywhere. No, it if doesn't I, if I may, Go ahead. If I may. On misdemeanors, mm -hmm. you can stack the maximum out amount of time of each charge next to each other, okay? Felonies, you can't. It's like one-third of the midterm, anything else. Okay, so, I... I some of these are one years, some of these are six months. So therefore you stack, so you, I think, okay, so you are, as of right now, you are convicted of public nuisance, six months. You are convicted of 422, that's one year. You are convicted of another public nuisance, that's another six months. Battery, one year. Um, I'm going to say six months, six months. Sorry, sorry, I might be wrong. Wait, wait, no, wait, wait. I had three four. to four months before. No, no, no. no, no it's no. different three. now. Three to four months you were incarcerated for, not how much he could have done it for. Wait, hold on, slow down. Three months, I was in, or sorry. Three months was the sentence. Yeah. But he stayed the rest of the jail time he could give to you if you successfully completed probation. Oh. This would be a reason to say you are not successfully completing probation, so I'm going to give you more time. Okay. And therefore, the more time could be the maximum amount mm -hmm. for each of these charges. Okay. All right. So I think it's at least right, four. four years. Yeah. So right now, our problem is, okay, that if a judge feels that you're in violation of probation, I'm merely disturbing the peace, they can put you in jail for four years. That's my legal analysis. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, this has been their plan since I was five. So if nobody's going to do anything but let them just take turns on me all day and night, they're going to get what they want. We all know that. And I told you that the first day I met you. 
Okay? Right. Everyone's sitting around helping them, and they're not saying anything. Well, right now, so, it, it, like, the Seymour will argue on your behalf that this is not di disturbing the peace, that this report is misleading, here's our, here's our proof, and if we've got a dumb, devious judge or a judge that's not in the loop, you're good. Maybe. You're still on probation. I mean, you're still on probation. Yeah. It doesn't solve the bigger problem. No, of course. This. But my point is... No, no, wait, wait. If that, if the judge is a smart, devious judge and wants to give you four years, what's your strategy? What do you mean my strategy? I'm not in the law system. I'm just doing you know, what no, I've been no, no, doing. No, no. And would you go do the time or would you be interested in a way around it? Like what? Well, you're, you know, I don't know. If we, We've never talked about what I do at all if, yeah, specifically. Yeah, we have Often, people have drug use issues. I don't think you have a drug use issue. Okay, well first, so and this is why we, well I don't know, you stopped talking to me after seeing all the video, but... Well there was um, nothing for me to do because I'm not, I'm not qualified at the level, oh, here's, I'm qualified in mental health. That's my No, I understand. So, so, so let's stop. stop. Okay, my other therapist has seen shitloads of video and instantly when the first minute said, oh my god, I can't believe I'm seeing this. Okay? And right now, I'm not saying no or anything to you right now. Okay. But at one point we spoke and you started kind of babbling about depression and this and that and blah, blah, blah. This is clearly not depression. It's mass attacks and harassments with random nut jobs in the psychology community saying, we're going to force you on medication or you're a dead man or gone or whatever because some psychopath with a psychology or psychiatrist, psychiatry degree starting probably with my own father and mother and brother or father and mother, decided this is what they wanted because of their anger, hate, and rage. Without going too far, people have seen it, they see what's going on, they know what's going on. Mass groups, over 60,000 people have seen Dinsey and his crew on their six break-in attempts in my house in the last few I months. I saw those videos. Okay. Um, well, I'm not saying no to you right now, I'm just telling you right now that this has nothing to do with mental illness. Now, if we're going to play a game like, hey, he's going to That's see a therapist. That's what I usually do. But I just want to make it case. clear. It's just not about Kevin having mental illness or okay. being a violent, paranoid so schizo. Or when, this I, or that. when I, first of all, I don't think you're a violent, paranoid schizo. Okay, well, that's what the pain okay. division is I don't, I don't think you're even a paranoid schizophrenic. Okay, let alone violent. Not any not schizophrenic right. or whatever. But. I'm agreeing. Okay. okay. And when I blah, blah, blah before, mm -hmm. it was about you could qualify for more support for the stress and that you're under yeah. chronic long-term stress so as a result of your experiences not because you lost touch with reality okay so there's a difference in mental health treatment providers between people who can't tell the difference between collective reality and not okay those are psychotics yeah. You don't qualify. No. Okay? Trust me. Everything I'm saying is accurate and it's all backed up okay. on video. But there are brain disorders often due to trauma and long-term stress. And tell me what part of your experience since whenever, from the earliest memories, hasn't been traumatic or stressful. All of this is traumatic. But, but okay. let me, but wait, let let me, me finish. Sure. Let me finish. So the concept of these disorders, anxiety, not major depression, but depressive episodes, OCD has triggers in stress. PTSD and complex PTSD all are considered to be nervous system adaptations to, to very traumatic and threatening experiences. And what, what mental so, illness is uh, being in the past in the skull with a crowbar? I'm just curious. Well, do you have traumatic brain injury? That's <laughs> no, my TV. I stopped my brother at 16 from bashing Gregoire's skull with a crowbar, and this is what they're trying to cover up. So, among other things, <laughs> but, so, but let me, let me, so what I do uh -huh. with other people uh -huh. and what I'm offering here only if you're interested mm -hmm. is I help determine other underlying stress disorders like PTSD, complex PTSD, and I throw in OCD for this reason. If you saw a fire coming over the hill at your house, what would your response be? If I saw it coming out of my house? Yeah. Uh, well, first it would have several factors. Your house. 
Would you grab a hose and at least hose down the roof? Of course. Yeah. But, but before that, I would listen to the news to see what wind directions and where it's exactly. going and this and that. Exactly. And while you were doing all of that, mm -hmm. we could diagnose you as obsessed and compulsive and somehow disordered if nobody else saw the smoke and understood what you were doing. Sure. In other words, anyone in a crisis sure. has symptoms of OCD. So I like to throw that in. I, I didn't get your point, though, because well, you that's can a perfectly understand. normal reaction. Uh, yes. But if I'm trying to game a, a system that wants to put somebody in jail uh -huh. that doesn't deserve to be there, mm -hmm. I'm going to use what I can Yeah, use. of course. That's what they've been doing. So one of my tools, in addition to two types of PTSD, one of my tools is OCD. Another one of my tools is let's find if, let's see if we can diagnose anxiety. What do you mean tools? You're saying throw a diagnosis as a tool? Okay, so I'll I'm continue. asking. I'll continue. Okay. The other thing I the other things I look for are any drug and alcohol abuse or use. You're not going to have that. So unless you've got something to tell me. So with my clients, no, well, I, I gather I'm, not, I'm, I'm slow. It takes me a lot of words to explain uh -huh. myself. Hang in there with me. Okay. So with my clients, I gather all these things together, yeah, you have to. and I look for the the doctor's the wrong word. The um, clinical psychologists and staff and treatment facilities that will be able to assess any one of these categories and offer residential placement, not lockdown, not 5150 hold, no forced medication, none of those things, but placement, and I can show you some of the places I, on my phone. Um, that I've used in the past. Well, okay, so time out. So now no, you're on, talking on, about what on. they tried to force me into. Hold on. No, because you're in the driver's seat here. Nobody's forcing you. No, I understand. Well, well, nudging and manipulation, but nobody's but forcing But if you went there, uh -huh. it might be, and nobody forced you to take And you're talking self check in. Yeah. So I could walk out anytime. You could walk out anytime, but the problem would be you walk out, they'd have to notify. And then we're at risk of jail. Okay. So if it's so, court ordered so. instead of jail, mm -hmm. here's how that goes. Okay. You stay and cooperate. And again, it's all laid out to you before you even go in. And it's not a lockdown facility. So in fact, yeah, you could get up in the middle of the night and take a walk and come back. But it might be deemed not cooperating with treatment if they're worried that you would take other people with you who shouldn't go out at night, blah, blah, blah. So you'd have to work and negotiate that. But as long as you're cooperating with treatment, you are outside of the court system. And what I've seen happen is people looking at three to five years get un get alternative treatment instead of jail time. And you're saying three to five years in there? No, three to five years in jail. Oh. They go, and within a matter of weeks, they get bumped from residential to outpatient. So they're back living at home, and they're driving to treatment like they go to a job at the office. After three to five weeks. I said a number of weeks. Oh, a number it of would weeks. depend on the situation. These would be questions to ask anymore. And what, what gets you an early release? Because well, they're well, not going to get the finish. answers they let want. Me, let me finish. Let me finish. So even though the court has said you should be in jail, you're actually, after a number of weeks, and when you interview, if you wanted to look at some facilities that might meet your needs this way, you would ask them, how long would it take me to get to outpatient? Let them, before you even go in, let them answer these questions. Mm -hmm. Let's write it down. Let's get some mm -hmm. stuff going on, right? Some details and to make you feel more comfortable if you want to do this. And so I've seen clients of mine go, I'm going to give you an example. Six weeks. That was long. It um, tends to be closer to three to five. You were right about that. Go to outpatient. They, they would have been in jail otherwise. Now they're living at home going to outpatient. Outpatient goes three to five weeks. Mm -hmm. And then it goes into one into therapy sessions. Like you're doing, not unlike what you're doing now, usually a couple times a week and then down to once a week. Maybe you're all in nine months. And as long as you continue to go to individual, all in, meaning uh, residential, outpatient, and uh, multiple therapy sessions a week, mm -hmm. 
but, but maybe that all takes nine months to complete. And then you're going once a week to therapy. All of this counts as alternative sentences under the court. So in fact, living someplace other than home, the amount of time has been three to six, you know, let's see, weeks. Let's get that up front, ask them up front how uh -huh. long that would take. Everything else you've been out free, but it counts as a jail sentence. Yeah, I understand what you're So I think of it as using the system to get out of the system. So because mm, maybe, this but is so much more pleasant okay, than being I understand, I understand the sales pitch. I understand what you're saying. I, well, this is what I and I'm, not, I'm not saying yes or no or anything. But what I am going to say is all of you know exactly what the fuck's going on. This has been planned from day one. My mom's running around. I just want you to have a normal life while fucking up my life. Okay? She, my mom's been trying to throw me in a mental institution with my father way back in high school. And don't you think it's a little strange that not only am I known worldwide with the groups of people going to mentally bash my skull in with a crowbar um, to get reactions like 422 criminal threats. What's my point? It's all fucking planned out from day one with scum and trash like Sean Densey and Jensen and Toro and Starbucks and Coffee Bean and my friends and growing up with and the people um, uh, my teacher, Mr. Quigley, told to tell me to punch uh, Paul Schaefer in the head and I said no and now they're pissed off that I know all these things. Okay. So my point is that even though you're sort of putting on a positive pitch like, hey, you know, we can kind of help you and save you, bullshit, it was all planned out from the beginning and we all know it. So this is where I'm coming from. Planned out or not, okay? And mm -hmm. I'm not telling you what to do. I understand. All I'm telling you is my concerns and my, I'm not going to say my fears, my concerns and my risk assessment on the situation. Um, I still don't feel that, okay, I don't feel it was a valid factual finding by the jury on the criminal threat. We all know that it was a kangaroo court. It's all, okay. it's all you so want. So my it? problem is that with a kangaroo court, whatever it might be, I have a real fear of losing you in jail for three years. Well, interesting. Didn't Dion Bush, who was my dad's limo driver over three years, and Janet Nordet as well, his ex wife? I, interesting. I, I, but, um, any of those people. Okay. Um, all that I'm saying, okay, all that I'm saying is for you to evaluate and for you to decide because it's your life. And I'm not sitting here also thinking that you should make a decision right now, but I think what you should consider is the options in front of you. And that's why we're here now, and not at the court date that I'll look at, that you'll have to appear at, to... Oh, am I supposed to appear on this point there? Yes. Yes. Um, so, I want you... And the reasoning, explain the whole... Because this being out there, they okay. want, you know, I, I had to keep them from throwing you in, mm -hmm. right there, when it could have so been... So, you're, what you're saying, just be direct, he's going to ask... Yeah, she's going to ask to throw you in on the 23rd. Okay, why don't you just say that? I just did. Okay. Okay. But for anybody else, you would have been in already. I bought us until the 23rd. Okay? Mm hmm All right. So, what I'm asking, and it's your decision, is to evaluate your options. Unfortunately, you know what jail is already. Yeah. Okay? All right. See what Deborah is offering. And you can say yes, no, whatever you want to say. But at least you're going to know all the options and you make a well informed decision. And if at the end of the day the decision is, I'm not going to one of the places Deborah says, and I'm going to fight it out because that's what I want to do, then at least you've come to an informed decision. What do you mean by fight it out? Go to jail? Yeah, go fight it to the probation violation. Wait, say it again? Fight it in, at the probation violation. What's that? I don't know what that That's is. That's when they're going to say point. that you violated the law on such and such. That you violated your terms of probation on December 30th, 2018. And you said fight it. What does that mean? I cross-examine them and I say, no, it didn't happen. And we play the video. Okay, and then 
why wouldn't I do that? And then they say, okay, well, now you have that choice. Because it'll throw you right out there because you fought it. It's just, unfortunately, when you fight something in the system, mm -hmm. they're very punitive. That's the way it is, and, and we can't have something in place that fast and everything else. Right. Takes time. You gotta, get, you gotta find you know, a facility that is opening everything else. So that's what you need to evaluate. And in terms of places, you don't have to accept any of my recommendations. You might want to talk to your own therapist and say, what, do you, what places do you know of that would take alternative sentencing of a client from, that's an alternative sentence from court, not require medication, but, have a res, that, but that has residential. It has to start out residential in these circumstances. Mm -hmm. And then, and then the court can't um, peek in because it's standard of care. It's wherever you're at is giving you the standard of care. If you're cooperating and you're making progress, boom, you're to outpatient, boom, you're to once or twice a week therapy. So the court can't interfere with and your course of treatment. And how long does that? Well, you would ask that you would ask the whatever facility your therapist would come up with, or in, or you would come up with these are questions you would ask in advance. Say, what's your normal course of residential treatment? How long does it usually last? And I would ask to see the, the place where you would be. I mean, make it sure it's nice. I mean, that doesn't have to be luxurious, mm -hmm. but just make sure it's not awful. Yeah. And, and then, you know, say, all right, so how, what do you mean by cooperate with treatment? What will that mean for me? What do you feel is a length of time? For, for a It could be a couple of years. That's insane. Well, but you're already in therapy, so what difference does it make? So There's a difference between being in therapy no, no, and having the freedom of going out and living your life. Right. No, no, no. no, no, no. Okay. I, didn't residential. Being, I didn't say you being a residential. Oh, 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 I said oh, oh. No, no, I'm asking residential. Yeah, no, residential is Could usually, be two or three months. Okay. More than 90 days well, is un almost unheard of. Exactly. Distance. What we're looking so for. So I would look at a maximum 90 days. An outpatient can go again. The longest years. it goes, out, well, outpatient, oh, sorry, outpatient comes in three forms. All day, every day, five days a week, mm -hmm. three days a week, two days a week, right. one day a week, and then individual sessions. So they would be willing to do outpatient stuff? It should go residential to outpatient. Right, so this, is what, this is what Deborah is saying. Okay? Mm -hmm. What she's saying, standard of care, and taking it out of the court's authority, so to speak. You'll have a professional who will be at the facility who will say, you know what, okay, I think he needs our patient now to come in once or twice a week, okay? That's why we work the court. The court's going to take it. Okay? Yeah, I understand. Okay, so what... Except the problem is that everyone knows I don't need to be in therapy. That's the problem. So well, what's... So what's I'm going to throw another one. What better way to be okay. the judge? Okay. No, but what, I, what I'm saying, you know, you're missing the point. The point I'm making is that everyone knows I don't need to be in therapy and I'm as stable as shit, especially at 29, finding out what was going on. Then they have ulterior motives in a devious way because someone wants me dead and gone. Hence, they have a uh, motive to their madness. They have reasoning to put me here. But and it's not for me to have a good life. No, not these places. These places would be safe places. No, oh. Wait, hold on a second. If all you're being treated for is a stress disorder... There is no stress disorder. You have no stress as a result of everything they put you through? I have stress when I'm provoked. Okay. It's a normal reaction. If I start provoking you right now, you're going to react. And that is not a mental illness. Okay, It's Kevin, a reaction okay. right. to a provoking. Again, Kevin, I use these things in order to avoid jail time. Exactly. Kevin, I'm going to step back. I'm uh -huh. going to say this. Okay? I at least feel that there's no reason to put you in jail. Okay? So therefore... Well, you should have stole the... You should have fucking won the case when I gave you all the fucking information to win the case. I... Maybe you I, lied to me. Now you lied to me then. You don't know what's going on. You don't know what's going on here. You don't know what's going on. Bull fucking shit. I'm known okay. worldwide. And my position was then, as it is now, that the criminal arena was not the forum for that. I don't know if I'd even be able to allow to get into evidence. 
And my problem was with that case, unfortunately, at the end of the day, is you scared the jury. The jury knew me. I didn't scare Jack shit. No, well, I don't know the jury knew me. Okay. okay. But if you can prove that, then that's a way Every to judge in that courtroom was sitting there taking turns in anger and rage on me. The police officers were whistling at me when I walked in the door. For you to say that nobody knew me is like saying nobody knows Donald Trump, okay? I didn't say nobody knew you. I said the jury didn't know you. The jury damn well knew me. Well, if you have evidence or proof of that, I, have. I don't know the jury. What's that? It's an, a new uh, three terabytes of information at every location all around the world of people taking turns on me. Okay. And when you can watch that explain, when I go out to Thousand Oaks, Camarillo, Oxnard, San Diego, Las Vegas, and each and every person I have I contact with. Any of the people on their members of the jury. What's the difference? If I'm known as if four because billion I people only, know me. I only work off of proof and evidence. <laughs> Whatever. I've given you so much proof and evidence. Okay. That's your opinion, and I understand. But where I'm at right now is I've got this situation, this probate, potential probation violation. I've got what Which you guys have been scheming for how many years? Well, I don't know. Okay. But that's where I'm at right now. I need you to make a decision as to what route we're going to take And that's going to make my mommy and daddy happy? I could care less they're about your mommy here. and daddy. Oh, who do you think is orchestrating all this shit? Well, they're not doing the it. Little Arnold way. Silver with all his money and Ronald Barry Perlman. You think I'm stupid? I mean, you think I'm fucking mm -hmm. stupid? We can sit in this office and, yeah, while you're muscling and bullying, and bullying me and I'm hugging not, okay. me, I, do you think I'm stupid? Kevin. We were you think right. I don't know what's going on? Okay, Kevin. You think I don't have like a hundred thousand recorded you. conversations of my mother working on me every way, shape, and form to try to make me look crazy? Okay, all right. I think oh, we I'm might have gone. I think we might have gone as far as we can today. This is what I'd like you to do. When's your next appointment with Brittany? Uh, tomorrow. Fine. Right. Go talk to Brittany about what happened here. In fact, if Brittany wants to. You know, I, I think after you talk to Brittany, then maybe there should be a conference call with me, you, and Brittany, if you want, and let's go from there. Okay, and how would you feel if she talks to you on the phone and she says, I'm seeing everything that's being done to Kevin? I don't care. Then let her, I mean, it's not going to, I mean, then, then that's going to be the decision that's made. It's not for me to have a personal involvement of anything. Well, you as my lawyer should understand that other people are witnessing the events. Then let her get on the witness stand and testify under oath that she believes that all these people are doing this against you. And that's what I'll ask her on the phone. Well, on the 23rd? Yes. Okay. Well, the, my, the hearing date might not be on the 23rd. But in, in her opinion, as a therapist, she renders that you are the subject of a worldwide conspiracy. Okay. I don't know if she's willing to say that under penalty of perjury. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go from there. Okay, so we'll do the conference call here. Okay. Um, you, after we're done here, I want to talk to you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm not saying you're in trouble or anything. All right. Good. You know, it sounded a little bit like going to the principal's office. <laughs> so I'm grateful for that. So, uh, All yeah. right, so you want to talk to Deborah alone without me? Yeah. Well, I don't care. I mean, we're both talking way, out of the garage. But, so, Whatever you sure. Want. I mean, do. Or now. Whatever you want. I mean, no, okay, so let's finish up here. I'll talk to you. And. Um, do, do we have anything? All that I, need I think you, you made it clear. You threw in the okay. ultimatum. Okay. No, they did. Well, I just want to. I want to defend you know Seymour a little bit. Here. No, I've no, seen this. Okay, before. Wait a second. 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 <laughs> I don't need to defend you. Okay. I'm. I'm really unimportant here. There are two things though that I need. I need that video. Okay. With just the incident. Okay. Two. I'm still needing the dates, I think, from October to November. I sent you a whole printout and, like, all the Recently EMLs. after the court date? Yeah, that day. Send it to me again. Okay. I don't... I'm going to get I, it I don't get all of it. You. Okay. Yes, do. Send me a text. I just sent it to you. Look, I sent it that day before... I, you called me at, like, 9.47... Which was strange because you're going to court at 8:30, and you said I don't have these things, and I was thinking, why didn't you? I talked to you 
the Thursday prior, like five days prior, do you have everything you need for me? And 30 minutes, I sent you those. So within that 30 minutes. So. Okay, three things. Might be three. I'm not going to count. One, the court might say it starts at 8.30. There are very few courts that actually start at 8.30. Yes, I know I've been in court. I'm just making a point that I, I notified you five days I, prior. I, okay, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, I'm Two, Yes, I thought I had everything. Maybe I should have gone into more detail, but I figured you're very detail-oriented. So that morning, I was taking from the raw data I had, I putting it onto the chart, and I realized I didn't have everything. So at 940 en route to court, I called you and I told you what I needed. But what I did not say to you on the phone was, if you don't get that to me right now, you're going to jail. What I did say is, this is what I need. I'll be able to handle it today so that you know. Okay? All right. So, you know the two things you need for me. Okay. Um, all right. So, I, I don't care. If you want to talk to Deborah alone, it's fine with Deborah, it's fine with me. No, no. I just wanted to expand on our conversation. I figured you probably didn't want to. Because I know you're like 100 miles per hour. Right. With, with, with 72 other things to do. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to do them in this office and we should take our leave? No, this is, this is a rented office. I, okay. I'd rather have you guys have the conversation here and I'll take my leave. Okay. All right? Okay. We're all good. I guess so. And you're right. So where I want to leave it with you, Seymour, is you guys will call me if you want me. If you need me, if I can be of any yeah, help. Well, I would like no matter I'm what. Obviously, I'm being pushed in that direction. It's so. the only play I've got. If you can figure out another play, great. Okay. So let me say two things. I have plenty of plays, but no one seems to want to help. All right. I have, <laughs> okay. I have two things to say. One, <clears throat> I'd like um, today's Monday. So one week from today, I'd like there to be a conversation between the two of you. No okay. 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 All right. Writing that down so I don't forget. Um, I don't know. This <laughs> All right. You want me involved in any case? Just keep me posted if you need me to come to another meeting. Yeah, that I can do. Right. And I. I I'm going to talk to Kevin a week from today, no matter what. Uh, okay, so I do, not okay. I, do kinda know, I do kind of know. I do kind of know what I want okay. to say. All right. I'm not forcing you into a direction, but I am concerned of what's going to happen if we don't go into that direction. You but just said they're going to either throw me in jail or not okay. pretty much forced. But what I have also <laughs> continuously said during this whole thing: this is your decision to make, not mine. My job is to have you fully informed. Well, of course. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I only work for all of three days a week. Mm -hmm. Okay. Local so I think that's all they can afford. I think I've rented this for another half an hour. All right, oh, great. So thank you. beyond half. What's this? It's the hard drive of a whole bunch of new shit. Um, you should just, just have it, okay? Just have it for whatever reason. Someone shanks me in jail like they that's threatened it. four times when I was in jail. Whatever, just have it. Okay. I appreciate the gift. <laughs> yeah. We'll do something with it. <laughs> Thank you, Seymour. Great to see you. Open or close? Um, close. Okay. okay, so, so obviously I knew there was going to be a surprise card coming out here today, so... What part was surprising to you? Oh, well, nothing's been mentioned that, um... I've been given an ultimatum to either ultimatum to either go to jail or mental institutions. So that was a surprise. Yeah. Seymour said there's a development. It has to do with the Starbucks thing. Well, there's yeah. always going to be a development, and they timed it and planned it. And obviously, you've seen the video, and nothing's there because nothing they're strategically there. ratcheting down, there. as I told you in the beginning, to get what they want, which is to put me in a mental institution, which is what. My but brother told of, me. But what kind of mental institution? All I know is that at 16 years old, after stopping my brother from bashing Gregoire's head in with a crowbar, he told me that he and his friends had put a teacher in a mental institution and then started working on me, uh, saying, um, 
we have a bug in your room and we're listening to everything we do on the radio where these gaslighting things started to ramp right. up. Right. And these gaslighting things were, st- were are my family telling my brother to do these things with my friends and his friends to lock me away and force me in a mental institution. Why? Well, you guys are going to start spewing out bullshit about trauma and this and that. It's bullshit. It doesn't exist. The only trauma that exists, which isn't trauma, is me turning 29 and finding out what my family was doing. And then trying to get away from it. This is now 18 years of them following me around with worldwide groups trying to torture me to death to get reactions to lock me away in a jail cell and mental institution with falsified claims that I 422 criminal threat terror okay. straw against Yeah, hold on, hold on. So lock away means a mental institution where all it's locked down, all the doors are locked and you couldn't get out if you wanted to. Correct. Well, okay. I can't tell you. By what. the way, those are not the the places I'm thinking of mm-hmm. are not locked down. Okay, but let's let's so, take. I understand that what you're thinking of, but I want you to understand something. Okay. I'm 47 years old. Yeah. For 40 years, all day and night, 24-7, my family has been hunting me, no matter how healthy and outgoing and friendly, uh, no matter how many people I try to have relationships or friends, they get angry, and they sabotage it. Yeah. Now, you have a psychology degree, yes? Yeah. Okay. Well, what do you think about someone that runs around trying to fix someone to death, saying, you have this problem, you have that problem, you have to do what I say, we have to put you in a mental institution, leave me alone, no, I won't leave you alone, stay the fuck away from me, no, I won't stay the fuck away from you, you're going to put you in a mental institution, because I want you to have a good life, we're going to put you in a mental institution, because I want you to have a good life, okay, well, if I had a good life at 29, before finding out what the fuck my family was doing, what do you think their motive is? Do you think you're a nuisance? No, I don't know what they think, all I know is they just don't like me. Okay, do you understand? All right. All right. I'm sorry. I thought, I mean, they give a different impression to other people, you can imagine. They? Your parents. Yeah, of course. And that's what two-faced murderers do. Well, okay. Okay, the point is, and I've made it clear to them, and they won't. I've said my life is none of your fucking business. They keep getting into it. And they keep trying to collect shit to use against me and then give out to the masses worldwide. Our son's crazy. He's the next Unabomber. He's this. He's full of anger and rage. He has OCD, he has depression, okay. blah, blah, blah. First, I, I, you know I've met your mom over the phone. Okay, and well, she's a neurotic nut job, but... She's <laughs> highly anxious. <laughs> and your stepfather, Arnold, seems to be a very patient man. He's to a deal, shit, but to, Well, okay, to deal with all of her anxiety. And, and she does have that kind of, like, got a call, got a text kind of thing going on when she gets worried about, and mostly it's been about... You know, what's Seymour yeah. doing? Is Seymour doing enough? So she's, with yeah. me, mostly been focused yeah. on Except Seymour. the problem is that she's the one but I've doing never, it. I've never heard anybody call you violent, full of rage. Nobody. Mike Huntley sent after me was a 25-year friend who turned out... I met... He sent after me at 14, and one of the reasons my father's so mad at me um, is because Mike Huntley introduced me to Melody the Stripper... And I ended up um, doing some, like, bounce for a few cheese ball bachelor parties. And my father decided with my mother and my stepfather and my brother that they don't want a child that associates with that type of thing or people and this and that. And as I got older, I was building adult websites and adult website systems. Um, Not associated with any crime. Right. But they got mad. Mm-hmm. And Mike Huntley was sort of giving me the cookie. Mm-hmm. Hey, Kevin, you want the cookie? Okay, well, now we're going to punish you. Mm-hmm. And when they punish me, it's your fucking dead man. Okay, this is not about trauma. This is not about depression. This is not about mental illness. Okay. My family sabotaged my uh, hobbies and career in studio photography. They sabotaged all the websites I was building from uh, Facebook-level systems they sabotaged whether it was the adult, they sabotaged the internet host provider. Mike Huntley had, was sent into my life at 14, at 29 years old, 25 years, went from... 15. 15. No, um, 14 to 29 14. Is 15. Oh, 15, yeah, sorry. Just checking, I want to make sure I'm tracking. Yeah, no, yeah. It's, it's almost like reinforced, yeah. I say something yeah. like that. Okay, so, um, um, goes from... I'm your friend, I've helped manipulate you back from Colorado to start a company with me, with your father and mother and this and that, to, um, 
I've given you enough rope to hang yourself with. Have a good life now in anger. Um, walk around the office singing World of Paranoia. Uh, dropping sheets of paper. Remember, Mike Huntley was originally my brother's friend with right. a mental illness. Right. Right. Uh, dropping paper out, making papers about making people mentally ill to control them. Yeah. Um, just going off on an angry rage and tangent showing that he was never my friend. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, well, my family sent Mike Huntley and Paul Humphrey and several people like that after me who devoted their entire life to get me where we are now. Do you really think this is about Kevin has mental illness and Kevin has trauma because he watched... No, uh, no, 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 those are my angles. Oh, okay. okay. Those are my angles. But, 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 and that's, so what I'm thinking now is maybe it's not such a good idea because you would have, it would take a lot of energy for you to go along with that. But on the other hand, jail is so god awful. Yeah, it's pretty horrible. So I mean, they were preparing me for so this you would by... need the energy to go along with stress treatment for however long the treatment team. That's what they call them now. The but, psychologists. But they're just going to the come up with, and... with labels that it's going to be bullshit. And that's but what they're trying is, to do. But they want to throw labels on me to control me. Do you understand? But the, if look, hold on, yeah. so, yes, I get that, <laughs> but. If you go along with it for, let's say it takes maximum six months to go through 90 days of residential and 90 days of intensive outpatient, meaning all day for somewhere between two and five days a week. Let's say it takes six months to get through all that. Once you get through all of that and you're only going once a week for therapy and the court is no longer involved, haven't you? But are they going to have like three years probation and things like that to just? Yeah, and they yeah, will have a bad day oh, next week. Oh, 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 I'm not that fast. Mm -hmm. Hang on. <laughs> is is yeah, there'll be probation, but so what? You know, we're at so what? Oh, hold on. Hold Didn't see will run around again saying Kevin now did this and then it'll be back. Well, maybe in the here's or someone I, else. Here's what I would be hoping is that between you, me, and Seymour, that while you were doing this game with therapy treatment for six months, and then you're just down to once a week, by the time you're down to once a week, first point I want to make is by the time you're down to once a week, however long that takes, um, the labels are gone. The ability to control you is gone. You're done. You've done your sentence. And it only took six months, say, maximum, plus now once a week therapy, which you're doing anyway. It Now you're done. So don't worry about the labels because it's gone now. It's over. And we're back to where we started. Yes, that sucks. But you've avoided jail time. And isn't that the most important thing? That's my question to you. You're going to have to I don't know that because out. the situation in itself doesn't make any sense because, because they're... It's never going to make sense, Kevin. It's too big. It's too intense. How are you going to make sense of what they're doing? It doesn't make any sense. No, you're missing the point. Oh. The that point happens. is... Go ahead. This is where they want me. They've spent 42 years to get me here. 42 years all day and night with a planet full of people. All day, night, 24-7, with, with a planet full of people. It's not for me. It's not to help me. Right. I don't give a shit what my mommy says. She's a fucking psychopath. She's, she's, okay, so, she's nervous. All no, she's night. a fucking psychopath. I'll take They're paranoid you. psychotics. You know, you know them okay. better than I do. Let me put it this way. <laughs> so. Has your son or anyone you know tried to bash someone's skull with a crowbar? Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Um... And that's what they support. Jason, doing these things. Now, I don't you actually said public nuisance. For all I know... No, that's what he said. Oh, he said. Or well, not public nuisance, nuisance, but a nuisance to my mother. Yeah, yeah. I want to know if she said... Well, I'm, I'm curious outside. where this shit's all coming from. Because... I have been, to my entire family, the nicest person on a man. And my father's running around like, I did all these things and I need to die. And, blah, blah, blah. and I'm like... I couldn't believe it's going on. It's finding this stuff out. Like, just, yeah. where's it even coming from? Right? And um, the point is that it's their anger and rage that I'm being punished for. Now that I know what's going on, yeah. everyone's helping them ratchet down more and more with their death threats. You don't talk or we kill you or you don't talk or we're going to do this to you or whatever. 
So, with that being said, sure, I'll, I'll go to, I'll be locked in a institution now telling people well, not what locked. I'm not allowed to tell them. Not locked. It's not locked. Whatever. I mean, look, It'll you be, can. It, there will be ways. You can only to get try to polish away. a turd so many ways. Well, you'd have to go look at it. If you, <laughs> yes, you'd still say this is a turd. No, it's not locked, but if you leave, this could happen. It's not, right, right. You understand? So, like I said, it would take a lot of energy to go along with this as a way to stay out of jail. That's what it yeah. would be. And yes, will it be annoying and a hassle? And do you deserve this? Yes, it'll be annoying. Yes, it'll be a hassle. And no, you don't deserve this. But it's. Oh, you know, they've got you where you, like you said, it took 42 years to do this. Here they look like they've succeeded. We got, Seymour's got one last shot because you were smart enough to video everything and get him, you know, you get him unedited yeah. clear audio and un, unedited, um, and the unedited video. I think you need both because the audio of what the staff was saying yeah. is not as clear. It was clear yeah. on the And audio, you can but, see he's inferring. That I have somehow done something to someone with my car and things like that. I don't know. Wait, I mean, yeah, he he just out of nowhere says this thing about yeah, I often come around corners. Yeah, like he know, was, was there's an innuendo directed yeah. at me. Yeah, and I have a guy on video that attacked me um, a month prior, maybe even less, making a similar hint. And the cops, I have the cops on audio saying we're not going to help you, and we right. don't right. have to help you. So, there's still a chance on the court date that that Seymour will be able to convince the well upon cross examination he'll cross examine the whoever shows up from law enforcement behind that report mm -hmm. and then he'll enter into evidence your video and audio. Yeah. There is a chance that the judge will look at everybody and say, Leave this guy alone. This is not yeah. what you did. the report is incorrect. It's not what they say it is, and okay, I'm sorry, Mr. Perlman, but you have to stay out of Starbucks. That I can't help you yeah. with. But you're not going here. This is not a violation of probation. We're all done here. Okay? Yeah. That is yeah. number... That it's is, a crapshoot. You don't know what's in that. Right. But that's the first thing. Yeah. And uh, that's what we're pinning all our hopes on. Yeah. I am nothing but the backup plan. And, yeah, I know that. And so... And it, you don't think that they would go, well, you know, we think he violated probation, so... Now you come in, and these are the options because that's a little strange. Here's here's the thing with that. The I understand why Seymour doesn't want to take the chance because mm -hmm. if you get a cranky judge with a full docket yeah, on sure. the wrong day, he doesn't even want it. Not even just you violated, yeah. you're out of here. Um, if that's not the case, then I think what you what you don't have to have already gone to treatment on the day of court. What you, what would be difficult for them to swarm around would be you saying, I'd like a to go to treatment, that's what we call it, treatment, mm -hmm. in lieu of jail, I have a spot that waits for me at this facility because it was, you know, Seymour would make his presentation. You're talking before. Yeah, that you go to check it out before, that you have, like, so you... Yeah, you, I understand. So yeah. in my... No, that's not what I'm talking about. Strategy. What I'm talking about, because that's not really the strategy that's we're forcing you into the plea, but yeah. uh, I'm talking... I mean, look, this is this is what they're planning, and that's the problem. And it's like it's hard to work around. It's like, why do they want to do this to me anyway? It doesn't, it doesn't make any sense. But um, they're not going to solve it. They're not going to fix me in any therapist or look. This is what I'm getting at. The only thing that's going to fix my life, and it's really not going to fix my life, is people admitting to what they did in my life. That's it. There is no fixing anything. Right. Okay. Right. Right. No. No. I'm you just. Could, this is. Because no, I understand. I'm just telling you. Only a strategy you. to stay out No, of I understand. But what I'm telling you is you have to understand the psychology behind the people yeah. that want to change me yeah. into what they want me to be or they're going to lock me away and rid me of the world, which is, it doesn't make any sense to begin with. And so by giving in... They're getting what they want because, and then they're going to they're gonna get angrier and angrier because Kevin's not going to change. Yeah. And what am I supposed to change to? Well, I'm supposed to like the proper, prim, proper girl that my mommy tells me I have to date. I mean, or I have trauma, right? Do you understand? So it doesn't make sense. And they're intentionally forcing me into a position yeah. because they want something that I can't give them. Right. 
and it's just going to get worse and worse for me, even if I bow down and kiss their ass. What's Is that the plan? Yeah, I, I don't have a plan. I'm saying. just talking. Yeah, no, um, I get what you're saying. I just, I. The plan is to get as much shit to the press as possible, so that someone can crank down these illegal operations and push back towards my family and what they're fucking doing. Yeah. Okay. okay. But we don't have time to do that before some judges. No, I mean, well, this. you get as much as you can, and whatever, and the pressure has to come. From the press, it's going, this guy is being hunted because mommy and daddy say, we don't like our kid and he has to be a perfect nice Jew in this net. Okay? Yeah. Well, my point is, what if I decided today that I don't want to be Jewish and I want to go to class, become a Christian? Or Do you understand the ramifications that my family would hunt me down and kill me over that? And somehow LAPD... I'd like to think they'd be so bad at trying something like no, that. No, they would they pay would off. Fail. Arnold Silver would pay off Dinsey of, of the LAPD and have him hunt me down and kill me like he's doing now with these maskers by telling them that I've done all these things that aren't true. Do you understand? So my point is, they're going to punish me and they're going to lock me away in mental institutions or jail cells. At this point, it might even it's probably too late. But the more I defy them... And when I say defy, just not being who they want me to be, mm -hmm. they're going to get angry and angry, and it's going to get worse and worse for me. Do you understand? Even if I bow down and yeah. go check in. So um, there is no trauma. There's just neurotic people trying to find whatever they can get to use against me. Right. And... Um, so that puts you in a very tense situation. Yeah, well, it's an impossible situation yeah. because nobody's saying this is wrong. We can say it's wrong, but it doesn't give us the power to change it. Actually, everyone does have the power to change it, unless they go, I don't care, and they all go, they all abandon Kevin, and they just go, we're going to do what we're told, and we're going to kiss the judicial system's ass, and um, let them do it, because I'm one man. I can't fight a planet full of people by myself, right. but you guys can, and you can tell everyone what the hell's going on is this isn't right and do not take any information from Arnold Silver, my father, my mother, they're insane. They are insane. Yeah. And um, there was something I wanted to... I hear this trauma thing because your first thing you were mentioning was trauma. And it's yeah. like, here's this trauma Seven, level. 70% of North Americans have endured some sort of trauma, something that would be construed as trauma in terms of its impact on your nervous system. Well, so. Of course, everyone's going to endure trauma. It's like, but that's the point is, um, for example, my family, they can't decipher between someone who is depressed uh, depressed, mm -hmm. and the clinical label of depression. Right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Oh, I know. My that's mother and my father, family. they can't understand that people have emotions that go up and down and this way and that. Normally. They don't, what they do is they collect one imperfection mm -hmm. and they hold on to it. And they label you, and then they go after you. I just want you to have a normal life. Yeah. And so that's what I have to deal with from my insane family right. with their labels and their bullshit. And meanwhile, Jason's running cars off the road and bashing people's skulls in the crowbars going, you don't talk, Kevin, or we kill you. Yeah. And that's okay. Yeah. Just don't fart wrong. Yeah. Or it's mental illness. <laughs> okay. So you have to under I understand that this that doesn't directly relate. Right. It's the right. ultimatum, but it does. This is the entire reasoning. And if nothing cures the reasoning, then nothing's going to stop Arnold Silver from paying off the LAPD to have me killed or eradicated. Right. And the more I tell people, the angrier my family's going to get. Yeah. And they're going to ratchet down. You don't talk Kevin. Yeah. And I can't tell you how much video alone of people, random strangers, threatening my life like that, which the cops don't think is wrong. No. Okay, so, I don't know. I can't, I'm exhausted. Yeah. I deal with people all day and night. We're going to lock you away in jail cells or mental institu uh, institutions. But I, I, even though you're saying, hey, it just might be six months, I have a feeling those six months are going to turn into a year and another year and another year, and then I'll get out and I'll say, look what they did now. And then you don't talk. And now it's worse because now we have convictions and you're labeled. Well, the convictions that. are already there. This is no, not no, a but new then charge. they're going to say this guy's labeled with all these things. And do you honestly think that when I go talk to these people and I say, "Hey, Kevin, why are you here?" Oh, you know, um, I have video footage of all these things. Oh, okay, it was a violent parent. Okay, so now we have the label we wanted for forty-seven years. Right. 
just kind of no, stop I, you from paranoia. I would, the, yeah, I, I, I would game it if I were you, but it would take, look, this is exhausting, and I think that you can, ex that right now, that jammed you up, and you can be exhausted in one of two ways. One is the exhausted kind of you get when you go to jail and you have to deal with the general population and all that that is. If it's me, I'm going to act crazy to get on the mental ward and do whatever it takes to stay there because that's the only place I would feel safe in a jail based on my experience mm -hmm. working with inmates. Um, and I wouldn't look forward to that. The reason I like to do what I do is just personal preference. If it were me and I had to be contained because somebody was saying bullshit about me, I and I could get the resources to pay for an upscale treatment center, I would take the energy to go along with whatever they were doing because if I've got to wait out time because of all this bullshit, I'd rather do it in pleasant surroundings. But it would I understand what you're saying, that you're exhausted. It would take, to do that, in pleasant surroundings, it would take an awful lot of energy for you to do things like avoid talking about what's going on with you. No, so you that they can't they play to when Wild they're so they're they can't take play with you. What do you mean? If I'm in a mental ins uh, institution, it's not, they're going to... First of all, what I'm talking about are treatment facilities much different than mental institutions. Okay, what's There's the, not where, that? you know where, uh, have you ever... Have you ever been in a facility that takes no. 50, 150s? Mm -hmm. All right, it's like a jail with um, everybody kind of, but you don't feel threatened because everybody's sort of drugged up. So you know you're not going to get raped or beaten because everybody's sort of drugged up. But every door you go through, you have to wait for somebody to buzz you through. That's a lockdown mental institution. A treatment facility looks something like a really upscale Airbnb where that has multiple bedrooms where people come and go pretty much as they please but they ask you please get up at this time go have a luxurious breakfast and then come to group therapy and none of the doors are locked there's no buzzing in and out and there's a schedule but if you talk nicely and respectfully to staff and you got half a brain uh, then you can kind of take timeouts for naps and so on whenever you want to and even after a while, after they trust you, that you're not a dry... See, they lack trust in these treatment facilities mm -hmm. because they've had a lot of lying, scheming, cheating drug addicts who are stealing shit and messing with people and bringing drugs in. So once they realize that you're not that, then all of a sudden it's like outings are yours, day passes are yours. It's, it's camp in a weird setting. I, I, I didn't, look, I didn't <laughs> love camp. I don't like being surrounded by a bunch of people I wouldn't have as friends. Would I volunteer for this? No, I would not. But if my alternative was the, men, was the mental board that I would choose to get out of gen pop, <laughs> in yeah. jail. If my alternative was gem pop in jail or mental ward in jail or that, I'll take, I'll take the weirdo summer camp. Okay. Yeah. So the no, lockdown. You still have to do your therapy session. Then. Yeah. You're gonna ask questions. All that bullshit. Okay. So how do you not tell them? And then I, I'm I'm gonna just be honest. Like always, I'm look. I'm a gang stalking target. These people in mass groups, which is now worldwide, take turns on me all day and night in anger and rage, removing from society. Okay. okay so okay, I can so, coach you on that. Here's what I would say. My family hates me. They've let me know this in so many ways. I haven't felt supported for being who I am since I was five. But that's since not the truth. Wait, 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 what do you mean? If they've been coming after you since you're five years old and definitely since you're 14, how is that love and support? No, you're, it's a half truth. For example, you're that's right. What I say. You're you right. To do half Except truths. the problem is they're paying off and contacting people to stop me all day and night. All right, but that's... <laughs> okay, so when you go to weird right, summer so, camp treatment, so, well, my you have point to is, talk in terms of emotions and feelings. So that uh, the data around that, if you say that, they'll label you. If you leave it out... That's the point. So, so why do you think... That, if I'm in a, a facility for six months and half those people in the facility are going to sit there taking turns with the terror tactics... And I'm just supposed to sit there and say nothing? Do you understand? How hard it would be? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. So, 
very difficult, almost as difficult as So jail, isn't that the but point is changing you to, you don't talk, or are we... Yeah, I see this as you're in control. I think you'd be more in control in a weird treatment summer camp than you would be in Gen Pop in jail. I could be wrong. You may be able to handle it in a way that... I, I don't know, you know, it's... I mean, you could definitely talk about All it in jail. All I can tell you is they're going to ratchet down no matter where I am. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah, it does. Because I still because think ratchet what, down what do you, is easier. What do you think this is really all about? Let's, let's, don't, don't, well, I understand what, the what court, you, the, the judicial thugging. that you're different, that people don't want no. you to be. Well, it, it probably that started you, that, that way. you see differently and that you think differently. No, I don't see differently. Well, how come you can't get all these people to understand what's going on with you? Because they don't want to admit that they're accessories to murder. They don't want to admit that they fucked up. When I turned 29, my cunt was like, oh, you're okay. And then he got really mad, like, oh, shit, he's figuring it out. Do you understand? Okay. It's a cover-up. And the entire reasoning with the you don't talk or we kill you, what do you think that's really about? Trying to ratchet down to silence me. Yeah. And the more I talk, the more I'm going to come out. Throw me, throw me in jail. Uh, there are many mental institutions, you don't talk, we're going to try to silence you. M my mother spewing out bullshit about wanting me to have a good life. Well, she destroyed my life. Now she needs to admit that she fucked up, that they did these horrible things to me. She needs to admit that, okay? Instead of trying to lock me away and silence me and rid me of the world. And that's the problem. Not Kevin. Kevin's a good, stable, kind, giving, caring person. Is open-minded and they destroyed my life. Out of their selfish hate rage. Yeah. Okay? And the rest is bullshit. So, I don't know what my fate is. And I can't tell you what decision I'm going to make, but... Do you think talking to Brittany about it will help? Yeah, well, I, I mean, she's seen shitloads of video. And she's right. flat out, this is, I can't believe it. And she's also gone out and witnessed it and things like that. And right. so, um, you know, she's one of the few that actually was honest. Yeah. And she saw the videos I I can't. And she saw the video of the people thugging me, and she saw the video of the things that, or the audio recordings of the police, of what they're doing to me in the police stations when I go yeah. record the crimes against me and how they refuse to help me. Right? Yeah. Okay, so she's seen all that. You know, what would she say on court and would it win? I can't tell you, but it's Most not therapists a... therapists I know won't go to court. They just have it as a policy. That's kind of how we're trained. Mm -hmm. And you have to hire a a forensic psychologist to that's his career is he, uh -huh. goes, he or she goes to court mm -hmm. they're like hiring an attorney only yeah. they're not an attorney so I don't know what she'll say but that would that would be what I would expect is something along those lines but who knows she's different she's good so um, if you know and she might help you figure out you know all, all Seymour wants is for you to make a decision. No, I understand that. If he's not successful, what My do problem do? with Seymour is that he intentionally lost the case. Really? Because he's filed an appeal in the appeal. Oh, yeah, that was the other one. Sure, he filed an appeal. Do you know how long they've been stretching out the appeals? Don't yeah, you find it strange? I'm just, saying, I'm, just, I'm just saying he wrote a good brief for I the appeal. Know. I thought, no, oh, it I is. Never it's saw. good. But it's what good. I'm saying is he spent like... Six or seven months, um, what's it called? Um, Developing it? No, uh, filing extensions. extensions. Now, the prosecutor's filing extensions. Why do you think that is? The, the case, the entire court proceeding was illegal. Two closing arguments for the prosecutor. Uh, I had things like tickets from Dincy giving me one inch in the red tickets two weeks before I took the stand showing Dincy's obsession he refused to use. He refused to show the jury the uh, photos and proof of all the things while right. the prosecutor. And the, 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 one of the girls on the jury is like, what the hell? He's not showing us anything. Right. It was all rigged. The whole thing was rigged. Yeah. Uh, they asked all the jurors, does any of, you, any of you people know who Kevin is? And then they start mimicking things from my Twitter and Facebook. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, okay. So anyways, my, point, on, is my point is that... My point is that it trying. looks to me that they're, they're, they keep extending the appeals because they want to wait till they can get something to use against me with Dency to put me not, where I am right now. They would have a hard time getting that into an appeal. You have to, appeals have to be 
only about the court case that you previously had. It no, what I'm it, saying. They can't introduce new evidence. No, what I'm saying is the reason they're extending the appeals is to buy yeah, time just, just so that Dinsey can get case. enough, something that they can lock me in jail or mental institution. Right. Okay, it's blatantly fucking obvious. And when I looked on the web, it said, you know, appeals are supposed to be 35, 30 days within the arrest. Well, the extensions count as filing. Well, but I mean, give me a break. What's really going on here, okay? Why did the guy lose the case in the first, uh, intentionally? Why did the guy uh, doing all the cryptic terror tactics with everyone else in jail, out of jail with the people in my neighborhood? Why is the guy... Um, why is he? That, why is that. he not fighting for me? No matter how much he gets paid, and um, I've given him so much information that he can use in and out of courtrooms. Well, he would have to, like he said, the information you've given him is not for this. It's not going to help you with this particular jam up. That's kind of a, it. It would be no. But my point is that every situation. Okay, first of all, the amount of information I've given both of you, and I've given him a lot more hard drive information in the beginning, which they said that all of it was inadmissible as evidence. Bull fucking shit. I wasn't there. No self, I wasn't allowed to do a self-defense plea, which is the entire case. Right. Saying these people are harassing me. No questions were asked of these people. Are you harassing Kevin? Um, no cross-examinations, information thrown... Uh, what do you call it? Um, information that wasn't checked in as evidence for cross-examination by the prosecutor of credibility type things where Seymour didn't ask any cross-examination questions like there's a photo of me in my house with a, holding a toy gun that I use in some of my model photo shoots. Right. Obviously my family are mad at me doing photo shoots as well. And so um, saying, look, this is you with a gun, blah, blah, blah. All Seymour had to say was, is that a toy gun? Yeah. But he never yeah. prepared for trial. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah. But I have uh, Cam Adaya from policeabuse.com, who I spent $40,000 following all over the U.S. with PIs, proving that everywhere I go, people know me, especially White House security in the Washington, D.C., White House of the United wow. States of America with counter surveillance could have been a witness on that case. Oh, Kevin, you're all allowed to have time to prepare for trial. Interesting. Okay, so you know. I get it. I get it. All right. So you're going to talk to Brittany. You have my phone number if, because I'm working tomorrow. Okay. I'm really if Brittany, down. if you and Brittany want to loop me in. Okay. What? What would our dialogue be? I guess. Well, only if you want. If you yeah, no, I'm just asking. Just, I don't know. You know, if Brittany's going, well, who is this woman and what do you mean uh -huh. this is an alternative to jail? Yeah. Call me and I'll do my little spiel for her and then you can hang up on me and you guys can talk about okay, it. Okay, that's fine. And that's... Uh, 818. Okay, go ahead. 208. Seven zero nine three. Okay. And what time? I want to like it, make sure I'm at my desk and not on the phone with somebody else. Uh, what time's your appointment tomorrow? Uh, she has given me a time. Okay. Uh, so will you text me and let me know when that is so that I'm not busy and not able to pick up the phone? Uh yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, I mean, you don't you don't think you a little strange. And how that police report that Seymour showed me goes compared to your audio and video. I understand why you video absolutely everything. What did the police? I haven't seen the police. Oh, that, that's what that's what that was. And what it says is that the staff of the Starbucks says that you threatened to kill everyone in that Starbucks and every other Starbucks. When in fact, what you said is Starbucks is trying to kill you. All right. Yeah. yeah. So the they they've totally yeah. flipped it. Right. And may and then got the FBI involved. What kind of the f is that? Or my French, but what, what the fuck? Yeah. Well, they're, all, yeah. they're they've always been involved since I was yeah. five years old. That's yeah. the point. Well, 
But Dims is a particularly awful version of this. Yeah. So, um, so I, I mean, look, I have also had clients who said, thanks very much. I see that this is like upscale, non-lockdown. It's still treatment. It'll still be a pain in the yeah. ass. I just want to do my jail time. And then when I'm done, I have no probation and they got nothing on me. So I, if that's your decision, we'll back you. We'll, we'll have rabbis come visit you. <laughs> You know, just to break up your time. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's like, yeah. you know. Well, that's what's been planned. That's the problem. <sighs> they jammed you up. It looks like they well, jammed you up. Not. Unless Seymour can use your audio video to say they got it wrong, the staff got it wrong, the people who yeah. took the report were, yeah. you know. Well, that's what he's supposed to, to do, but well, my problem is that Seymour has a problem when he, he does... The bare minimum. Yeah, you did all the work for him. It's okay. Because you give him that audio. Video. He never wants to do anything that shows that anything's being done to me. And that's his job. That's his job to prove self defense. Well, on this one, the only thing he's got to get you out of is a probation violation. That's the only thing that has to happen at this next. So do you day. think he's accurate on the like four or five years or seven years? I mean, that's on, these are misdemeanors. These so are what happens, The courts hate probation violations. Because the judges, you know, they back each other up. Mm -hmm. The judges say, here's a judge that gave you a break, you know, lighter sentence and probation, and you took advantage of that break. Probation is a break. It's a privilege. So if you mess up on something that, that the court is trying to be nice to you about, screw you. So they hate probation violations. You come in on a probation violation, and they love to just go, out you go. Now, the two situations where they won't do that is if you come in and you've already been, you're, you're presenting at court, but you're actually already part of a treatment program, and your lawyer says that wasn't a violation, he was stressed out, he's getting treatment for his stress, he's already in the treatment, please allow his treatment to continue have an alternative sentence to treatment instead of back to jail. So it kind of says, yeah, they kind of, it was kind of a probation violation, but it wasn't that he didn't mean to, to be ungrateful for the probate privilege of probation. He was under stress, let him finish out treatment, he'll be fine. And then just says, okay, fine, go back to treatment, get out of my face. And um, the other is that the attorney says, this is ridiculous. This was no violation of probation, which is the argument Seymour is going to make. We have proof. Nobody ever has proof. This is so, because yeah. you have to be so cautious and you video yeah. everything. You know, nobody ever has proof. They always believe law enforcement. Yeah. Boom, you're gone. Now he's going to say, it wasn't, it didn't happen like this. We have proof. If the judge likes your proof. Yeah. You're free. But We're no, well, yeah. Well, what I, but he, I meant with the, the sentencing years that he was for. Oh, so if the judge. So, no, so what I'm what, saying is. Oh, so wait, these are tiny misdemeanors, right? But these are these are felonies. It doesn't felonies. matter. It doesn't matter. Because when it's a probation violation, mm -hmm. they go back and they say, okay, since you couldn't bother to go by the terms of your probation, Mr. Mm -hmm. Perlman. We're going to take all the charges against you, and he says, with misdemeanors, and he's right, you stack them. And they calculate, okay, that's a total of maximum four years. They can, if they're really crappy, they give you the maximum four years. Now, how much do you serve? Half or less, because the jails are too crowded. Um, so that's, if they go max, Two years is probably what your max is what you're looking at. After 18 months, you could get out at any time. Okay. Um, sometimes they'll do 70% of max. So what's 70% of four years? I don't know. I'd have to use my calculator. Yes. Yeah. Close to three years. Close to three. Yeah. And now we're looking at any time after a year. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, isn't the sentencing length a lot longer for? 
harder crime. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah, but it doesn't work that way when you violate a probation because they look at it as if you're spitting in the eye of the court, and so they get cranky and go for max because you should have just been able to abide by the terms of your probation. This is you showing lack of respect for everything, and so they want to do yes. This. So yeah, that's why it's um, it's ridiculous. Well, isn't is probation though, like for example, doesn't probation have have to fit the crime? For example, I can understand if they say, "Hey, you threatened someone, you threatened to kill all." That could be a violation, but he's saying, "Well, we feel that you harassed." No, no, no. He was. He was, he was giving you different shades. Yeah, I know what he's so doing. So if he believed, if the judge believes the report and not your evidence, that report is criminal. another criminal threat. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Max, yeah. you're, you're done. Yeah, and then you show him the video and go, okay, he didn't threaten anyone. It's just a nuisance. And now we say he's a nuisance, so now I still feel that you violated probation. But is that really violating? You know what I'm saying? He, I see what you're saying, and I could see a reasonable judge going, okay, sit yeah, down, just, FBI. This was no criminal threat. Yeah, Nuisance. I don't know, Mr. Perlman, if you should be going into Starbucks videoing everything and talking about their plans to kill you. I think you should stay out of Starbucks and just not talk about that in a place of business. This is a nuisance. He should let you go. That should be how it should go with a lecture, a stern lecture. Um, but yeah, he could say, yeah, "All he right, could do go whatever do, he go, wants. Go do mean, ninety days." Yeah. He could say, "Go do ninety yeah. days," and okay, now we're looking at a month. Four to yeah. five weeks, because nobody does ninety days anymore. The jails are too crowded. As long as you keep your nose clean, you're in, you're out. Um, but you're in a horrifying place, yeah. so I don't know if it's worth it. Me, yeah. I, you know. No, and I, they wanted to teach me a lesson. They threw me to pitch this wayside maximum security yeah. prison yeah. Um, to sort of plant the seed. Yeah. When I, they got me to this point. Yeah, see how powerful we are. Yeah. Yeah. So, but you do understand the ramifications of what's really going on here is that they're hunting me. There's, there's hundreds of thousands to a million attacks per day, every day done to me worldwide, and just taking simple walks around my house, maybe a, a hundred people will come out of their houses, work on me every single time, and every place I go in the world using the internet, mass groups take turns to torture and kill me, and then it's, you suffer from mental illness, and we need to put you in a mental institution. Well, let me tell you, if people are investing that much time, energy, and resources, yeah. They don't want me coming out of that mental institution or jail cell. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, but you got out once. You're out now. Yeah, but... So I'm, I just okay, want you to have a little bit of hope. But you're missing what was, what the point. No, I'm not missing the point. Okay, when I was in there, they were working on me. Everyone was working on me all day and night. The police yeah. were working on me. The people, were, the gang members with the police were working on me. Um, when I got out... Uh, their attacks outside didn't stop. When I went to therapy with court orders, the people th people threatening my life, saying you don't talk to Brittany, um, and what things like Brittany this. What does Brittany say, though? What does Brittany say? Maybe she's more hopeful well, than I am. I'll say about what, though? Well, about I this. mean, she sees it. She says it's unacceptable, but that's where it ends. You know, it's like, yeah. oh, okay. hey, you know, there's a worldwide campaign to kill you. It's unacceptable. That sucks. Okay, anyways. But you're still alive today. There's more to life than being alive. There's your freedoms. Okay, that's like telling a slave. You're free to Have you ever walked up to a slave while he's being whipped and say, well, you're alive. Well, what about the whipping? Okay, okay but you're not being whipped right now. And you're okay, free until I walk out of this room and then it's, we're going to whip you until we can lock you away. Yeah. Okay? All I see is your strength. And I don't, know, I don't know how to fix and stop it for you. Even if we could get them to you admit it, I don't think they'd stop. There's that's only the one way to stop them, and that's do what I'm doing, but other people. Does that make sense? Yeah. I can talk all day, but I'm just talking to myself. I'm talking to a wall. Mm. If nobody's going to sit there and act, I say, look what they're doing to Kevin. Everyone retweeted on the internet. Everyone posted on news channels. Everyone do this. Then they get what they want. And my mommy and daddy, who had a child they hated so much, they got rid of. 
And they covered it all up. Our son's crazy, and he suffers from trauma, and he suffers from this, and he suffers from that, because they got mad. Because they got mad they didn't have the child they wanted, because they didn't go to, to uh, medical school and get that secondary psychology degree and become a devout Jew, okay? And that's what this is really about. Make no mistake, okay? Yeah. It's not about Kevin suffers from trauma. Everyone goes through tra traumatic events now and then, okay? The only time my life got bad was at 29, met with Mike Huntley and Rodi Morales, working with the LAPD. It's not like you killed someone, have you? And Mike Huntley and Rodi Morales tell the world that I've killed someone and I'm on the run and need to be removed from society and another 100,000 accusations like that, which have all been proven and... Um, like I said, I can talk and I can talk and I can talk, but if you guys aren't going to take the information I give you and actually say, fuck Anita Perlman, she's crazy, fuck Arnold Silver, fuck Ron Perlman, this truth needs to get out. We have a person here. He's a human being. He has a heart, he has lungs, he breathes, he feels pain. This is unacceptable. There has never been a crime this big against one man in... in the history of humanity, and nobody's doing anything but saying, we got to rid Kevin of the world, just like Adolf Hitler said to the Jews. And so, if you guys go, just sit there and let them win, they're going to win. Okay? And I've, I've been shoveling everyone video. I used to shovel you tons of video. Yeah. But nobody does anything with it. They just... Who am I going to tell? You forward it to everyone. You talk to your pe people at dinner. Look what they're doing to Kevin Perlman. They don't Perlman. want to know. They don't want to know. Oh, trust me. If they knew the truth, they want to know. Because you want to know why? Because they could be next. Because you could be next. Because your kids could be next. I get that. Okay. I get that. So, you don't really understand, or anyone else, the ramifications of what's really going on here. I'm not some guy that went out, bought an Uzi, started robbing banks. Okay. No. I'm a guy that went to colleges, yeah. and I got degrees, and I tried to start um, starting businesses, and meeting people, and having friends, and relationships, and bam, I turned 29, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Now, now all the things are starting to make sense, why I couldn't meet women, and why they were acting, why, they, why they're doing what they were doing, and things like this, right? And so, people should be shitting in their pants, going, this could be me, this could be my kids. This just takes one little psychological label. One little harmful thing. Hey, um, your son might have OCD. Let's rid him of the world. Let's do horrific, unspeakable acts. Horrific, never-ending pain and torture. Oh, but we didn't touch you, so it's okay. Yeah. No, it's not okay. Yeah, and then what's the end of the fate? Oh, well, you're locked away in a cage. Okay, so, well, here's the thing. They can, no one can sentence you to treatment. Unless you kill someone, you cannot be sentenced to psychiatric treatment. You can be court-ordered to treatment, but not if you say, send me to jail. But what's the difference between, so, I don't even know, what's the difference between treatment and going to a, whatever, where you're saying three or six months in a, in a house, what do you call it? Well, it, I call it a treatment facility and residential. Residential treatment is when you live there. And, it's very expensive, and it, it doesn't last long because nobody wants to pay for it. It's, it's like 50, 60 grand a month. So <laughs> seriously, I mean, it's expensive. So it doesn't last that long, and then you live at home and drive in it. What is, like, like oh, I mean, you sort of explain I'm trying to. Like, I remember I had a friend Tom Farley, and he went in a halfway house. Well, that's different. No, that's different. So if a, if a halfway house were needed, and it would not be in your case, that's in the case of, uh, oh, you were a gun-toting heroin addict who stole, who did an armed robbery. That, that really? doesn't... He just did hit and runs on, on speed or whatever. Okay, was, you okay. danger to others. You okay. need to be supervised. So that's like, instead of outpatient where you live on your own and you drive in for a day of treat of camp, mm -hmm. a day of treatment. Uh, in a halfway house, you have to live in a home that's usually in a lower middle class part of town because nobody wants them in their neighborhood. Okay. Um, eight to ten guys, eight to ten to twelve guys, all in the same house, two to a room. 
uh, shared bathrooms with a house manager that tells you when to get up and drives you in a van to your treatment for the day and picks you up and then you all make a dinner together and you go to a 12-step meeting and then you go to bed on a curfew. Okay, That's so a this house. isn't as bad as a house. Right? No, no, this is, this is this is residential, meaning you live well, like at he, the facility. He, he had a house, it was just a house on like... Yeah, Winnetka it's a regular, or, regular neighborhood. Yeah. Regular neighborhood. Okay, so this is, this would be... This is in a uh, more of an upscale area. Was well, this in a house or is it more of like a building? No, it's a building with, um, or it can be a group of houses. Sometimes it's mm -hmm. three houses, you know, next door to each other. There's men living in one house, women living in the other, and the treatment happens in the house in the middle, that kind of thing. Okay. And um, then, and it's, in that regard, it's, that's at, like, at, so the halfway house is like residential treatment, only halfway houses, you, some days you're going to treatment in that bus that everybody's driving mm -hmm. you, and other days you're going to work say, taking public transportation and coming back by curfew. In this scenario, you live, so you're supervised the whole time during the residential part of treatment. And then, because you've cooperated and you've had your groups and you've gone for equine therapy and art therapy and outings and everything's been fine, they say, okay, you're ready for outpatient. You don't have to live here anymore. Go home. But come for group and individual therapy and outings and stuff, you know, four days a week, three days a week. See how you do living back at home if you're not too stressed, blah, blah, blah. It's very nurturing yeah. and all that. And then eventually it's like, okay, you're done. And now continue to see your therapist start two day, twice a week and go. And when you're done with, when you don't need twice a week, go yeah. once a week. And meanwhile, the only thing that's happening at court is they send a letter to Seymour that says he's cooperative and complying with all aspects of treatment. That's it. That's all yeah, of course. Yeah. And so... But there's no details. Did, about, oh, did you see... Was there's that, no, there's that no labels and there's no details. Okay. They're not allowed, those now. By, okay, good. So, so it's just, he's here, he's doing what... He's cooperating. Not he's doing well. He's cooperating and compliant. Boom. That's all you get. That's all they get to know. That's all that they need to know, and that should count, and that's what I would ask Seymour to do, that should count, treatment should count as your probation, so, you know, because you're doing, you're, you're, getting, your, you're getting yourself taken care of, people know that you're doing well. So, yeah, it's so not just my taking, case, they don't want me to do well. Well, that's yeah. Uh, did you see a, didn't see, was Dinsey's name on that report? I did not see um, that, but I think it is. I think it is part of that. Yeah, I'm pretty sure because he hopped my fence and dropped yeah, Doug letters yeah. from Starbucks. Yeah, like, the way cops don't you know. deliver right. corporate letters. Right, right. <laughs> Especially exactly. hopping fences. Right, right. No, it gets particularly bad. You know, but that's all things that can come out in court, I think, right? Yeah, okay. Hey, why, why, you know, didn't he showed up? He broke onto Kevin's property. He, but that, that's the point. Seymour won't use any of that. I think he will this time. I don't know. I mean, so I if, if nobody's going to crank down, he's not going to listen to me because... If he's coming with... It, was there somebody... But when I saw that video, I saw somebody else with him. And... There's, that, there's multiple. So I yeah, saw, there was, I I saw a woman know. and I saw... That was the time before Dinsey hopped oh, okay. over. The, okay. There's another well, one. The judge is only going to want to hear about the December 30th incident, incident that isn't an incident that's listed in the report. So, But isn't it, don't you think that there's circumstantial evidence? Hey, um... No, because either you threatened to kill people in a Starbucks or you didn't. That's the only point of that report. You didn't. Screw them. Yeah. That should be how it goes. That should be. We don't know this how should, it. That should be how it yeah. goes. This should be over in 10 minutes. Yes. Yeah. Now, they want to bring in other material, and the judge allows it now that Seymour has that hard drive. Yeah. You know, now we could begin to talk about those things, but it, you won't know until the day of the, the hearing of that. So, you know, I, 
I'm just here if you want to use the alternative. Okay, well, do me a favor, and as soon as possible, send me a link to some of those places so I can Okay, kind of there's only two that, that I would recommend, mm -hmm. because the other ones are kind of cheesy. Um, one's called, they call it PCH, it's Psychological Care and Healing, mm -hmm. and I'll send you a link to their website, and the other one's called Resilience. PCH has an outpatient facility in the Venice, Santa Monica area. Their residential facility is in Pasadena. Okay. Okay. Um, resilience is somewhere in Santa Monica. They're upscale. They cost money. We'd have to hit up Anita and Arnold. Do you think they'd be in? Go for it. I do because this is what they've wanted for me for my entire life, which is <laughs> sick and sad. But <laughs> <my only. laughs> make them come down for family day. <laughs> no, I mean, no. literally, it's like that. But, um, <laughs> so, so um, yeah, so those are the two. Brittany might know others. Um, and and we'll see. And if, I, if you wanted, I would ask Brittany, would she go on a tour with you? You know, to uh, anyone that she would know, mm -hmm. I'm happy to go with you. You don't have to take anybody with you. It's I'm just here at your service. If this is the way you want to go, you're in control. Yeah. And if you say, you know what, I'm going to take my chance. <laughs> well, in this little bit, um, if you say I want to take my chances, I, I'm going to hope Seymour will do. You know, the the evidence will be proof enough. If you want me or somebody from Olive to come to court that day to say we think Kevin did not violate his probation, you know. Uh, Why wouldn't you say we saw the video and he didn't? But well, that's, <laughs> that, well, yeah, yeah. Sorry, you know. No, I, would, I think if can, you want to show up in court, that'd be great. Okay, and I we think can give you a want. letter. We can give a letter. It, the judge might not allow it, but we can have a letter available that says. We saw I the video. Think all we don't those think this is a violation. Be covered. We'll cover. Yeah, we'll just pay and for you all the bases. You even throw some in the letter. We've seen mass groups attacking Kevin. You know, like, yeah, I you know we'll see. I've I, seen tons of video. These people won't leave Kevin alone. I mean, that's what really needs to needs to come out. Yeah. Um, again, in my experience, that happens if the other side goes. But your honor, it's not just this is. But it's good to, to try, try to get it. it. You know what I'm saying. You have to be. If you front load it, they get pissed off. Yeah, you got to so, be careful. Yeah, and you still, show your I mean, hand, and you show your hand. It's not always a good idea. So well, the problem is they have the whole hand. They have the whole right. hand. But we can be. But I'm, you know, and I'll ask. He said the 23rd. You said the 29th. Do you actually know? No, it's the 23rd. When the next four days? It's, it's the 23rd. Okay, it's a Thursday. That's easy. What is the CLK? Um, I don't know what that is. There's a date that they keep the on the twentieth. There's a like CLK, which I thought was like collections and bonds or something. No. Um. Well, do you have to pay a probation fee? I have no clue. What it? it's just been sitting there forever on, on the docket or whatever. Okay. I'm not just curious sure. what it was. I don't know what a CLK is. Um, I could. Google around and see if I can figure it out. What day? Eight thirty, the usual. Yeah. Is this Van Nuys? Um. Yeah, Van Nuys Courthouse. Um. One thirteen. Um. And then I think nine a.m. on the twenty third. Um. I'm not one hundred percent, but I know twenty third, one hundred percent is the this day that Seymour was talking about, okay. which he sort of was holding back, not telling me right. Um. No. no, it's not entirely good news. CLK 520. I'll look this up and see if I can find out what it is. What is this? The other thing you might want to notice is, hey, Kevin, you didn't send me the video. You know what? I know I've, I've seen that in <laughs> lawyers and other people before. What that is is very busy people who don't pay to have a personal assistant 24-7 and don't read their emails. You sent it, he didn't see it. Maybe, but then we were talking about the other thing, that days one you go to therapy and, right, it's like... I know. It's not fair. 
But and then the thing is, like, remember last time here, I gave him a stack this high. Yeah. Oh, he has no time to get through all that. No, but the point is, it's like, see, right now with the judge, they're going back. Even though I've been in therapy for five months. Yeah. But now they're going back. Like, well, oh, going, we have to see if he didn't. You know what I'm saying? It's not about that, though. It's about dints in this setup of saying that you said something that you didn't say. The therapy doesn't count. Once somebody thinks they can prove that you violated probation, the therapy doesn't matter because therapy was only one part of your probation. No, no, my point is that, okay, look, we're in progress hearings, right, to go yeah. forward. Yeah. And so here I am, and I finally find someone, right, right after calling like 500,000 people going, you're a dead man, we're not going to help you. And, um,. So now, even though things are getting better, they get angrier. You see the... Well, the yeah, obviously. Okay, the so, them, yes. so now, well, we want to go back. We want to go back to see if you fucked up a year ago or... You no, understand? they're not going back. Sure. What do you mean? Seymour is telling me that something's wrong because in October of 2018, he doesn't have full proof of me Oh, no, no, you're overthinking that. Seymour's not no. that smart. That's not what he meant. That's not what he meant. Yeah, he did. The only thing that matters right now is the December 30th report that they're trying to jam you up in. No, he has asked. He court. went to court. Oh, that. Oh, he was just trying to defend himself because you caught what him. What are you talking about? You caught oh. him not being prepared. So that's what that was about. He was going no, back okay, just, to defend just here, himself. Let me explain the situation. Okay, okay so last... Last court date, which the 24th of last month. Right. Okay, first, I text him or call him or whatever five days prior. Is there anything you need? Yeah. At something like 9.47 a.m., I get a call. Kevin, I need, I don't have proof. There's a gap, a couple months gap. Oh, this is huge. I'm stuck like this big. Okay, totally unheard of. Like, I have to keep calling all day. Someone help me. Please help me. Help me. Okay. So, um, there's two months I don't have and something's not right. Oh, this is what you mean. Yeah. Okay. So, right. it looks like you didn't do anything for two months, which could be a violation of probation. Uh, so, I go through and um, I go, you know, see why I'm calling like 100 million people. You know that. You were there at the last meeting. Okay? Yeah. And then I explained to Seymour, even though he doesn't really care, I was, look, Seymour, I have to look at the data, and I'll send you what I have, but, you know, if someone's sitting there calling like 100,000 different people, and they're just worn out for spending all day and night trying to find one simple therapist that none of them will help him, there is a possibility that I spent some time not calling some. Right. Which seems like perfectly normal human behavior. You don't have to be perfect. So anyways, my point is that, I don't know, what has it been, a year or something? Yeah. Okay, Almost. so, so, and you saw the stack, it was like this high. No, you called. Okay, and so, whether, whether you had those dates or not, I found something like 117, or was it 317? contacts within, and there's something like three weeks where I gave up. Okay, so... Um, Which is fine. The court's not going to hold you on that. And that's the point that he's sort of like, he just mentioned, here, Kevin, uh, I never got an idol and something's okay. fishy. And, okay. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, it's like um, if I asked out 100,000 women and everyone said, no, I don't want a thing to do with you, and then they said, well, you're a dead man because you're gay, <laughs> right? I guess kind of the, I know, that's funny, right? But yeah, exactly. Yeah, right? And yeah. so, um, the point is that I can't tell you who that's coming from, but it seems like it's coming more from Seymour to, like, Kevin, I don't think you're a good person. No, but, I think he was just defending himself because you caught him and not, you know, it's like... It, 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 like the text, like and yeah. the text right here, yeah. you know, the YouTube. He's, he's got, you know, like a lot of, like a lot of attorneys, and he's a good attorney. He's got, he has a track well, record he, of success. He dumped everything from, and when it comes to so, me, he threw in the towel and dumped the entire case. Okay, I could have, I could have done it better. 
really good appeal on that part, but he wrote a really okay, good appeal. Okay, but the appeal is pointless if they're setting me up before the appeal. I'm just talking about his work. And like a lot <sighs> of good attorneys, they have big egos and they don't like it when they're challenged. So he was being a little smitty with you. That's that's how I read it. And and he's kind of like, Okay, Kevin, you're not perfect, therefore, you know, there's problems. It's like, well no, you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be perfect with probation. You don't have to be perfect. Well, they're making it in my life. It in my point. life, they're making it. I have to be a billion percent perfect, or I'm a dead man, and that's the problem. Yeah. Well, I don't. I think you're gonna. I. I. I hope that he. That your video and audio evidence will be enough. I hope so too. But I. I, don't, I, don't. I pray that it will be, just in case. I'll make sure Olive has a letter, and I will come with to you with. I'll be there in court. I don't know if it'll be helpful, but just in case, I like. I think we would be well suited to talk to Brittany about the idea of having a, the ability to say, "I think, I think I need treatment in court," and I've already got a small. You want her to say it? No, no, you. If Wait. if it looks like in court, mm -hmm. if it looks like the judge is not going to accept the evidence. Mm -hmm. That you lean over to Seymour and say, "Let's go for let's go for treatment," and Seymour says, "Your Honor, would the court consider an alternative sentence to treatment? We have a spot waiting for Ke Kevin today because you have talked to Brittany, you have found a treatment place like I've described, mm -hmm. and they have said we will keep a spot for you if you need it if things don't go well in court. I would like you to look into that as a plan." You, you don't really have to lost. use it. No, I understand what you're saying. First of all, I don't know how I would know if the judge looks like this or that. But well, not until you get there. Not until Seymour presents the, the audio and video. No, but then, how would I know what the Well, judge the judge is. will say, uh, I see the evidence and I disagree. This is still a violation of probation. Oh, okay. And then you go, go for alternative treatment okay. and it's already there. Okay. And then Olive will step up and say, we support this bid for alternative treatment. We will do case management. Mm -hmm. And we will write reports. You get to see them. The reports say, Kevin is complying with all aspects of treatment. Boom. Oh, and Brittany they, writes those reports. Right? Well. Wait, I told you totally so last week. So if okay. you're in court. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so if, if, if he feels. If the judge says, I yeah. see the evidence. I still think this is a violation of probation. Mm -hmm. You tell Seymour, let's go for alternative treatment. You could tell Seymour, I don't, you know. And then, but no, but I was trying to figure out what. And then, and then alternative treatment. You mentioned something with Brittany, though. Well, <laughs> I want you to talk to Brittany to make a plan no, for alternative what, what treatment. Was, yeah, but we'll explain what So, that. and then it's alternative treatment, and the tr wherever you decide mm -hmm. after touring whatever, talking to facilities, whatever one you choose, mm -hmm. and you would go to them because they're holding a spot for you, they would write a letter, a progress letter. All they can say is, he's here, he's cooperating with treatment. That's all they can say legally. Olive would also write a letter saying, we can verify that Kevin is at this treatment okay. center, and, in, and then... You know, Brittany could too, but why? Oh, so uh, Yeah, that, yeah, and, uh, but no, she wouldn't have to. Unless yeah. she was on staff at that treatment center. In which case, yeah. the letter would come from her. Yeah, but it's so really the only thing I need to ask her is if she needs to testify, wants to testify. She, yeah, she wants to testify, yeah. and does she know any residential treatment centers that she would recommend that would do court-ordered alternative sentencing? And I'll have to send you the links to the... Now, what would she be asked on the stand? Well, you must have some kind of... Well, well obviously, what do you think Kevin's well, violent? Well, let's see. Where in this case, would he, they would have to say... I'm trying to think, because in this case, because she wasn't there at Starbucks, so she couldn't testify. She's not a witness. But she can see the video. But we can all see the video. The judge will be the... Oh, true. Yeah. So... But she could say, I've seen all the other videos of things being done. The only re way... You could have her come and pay her to be there. Okay. But she would have nothing to do and would not be called for it unless the other side said... You're, and the other, it would be this. Mm -hmm. The judge would say, 
I don't see a violation. Yeah, that would be done to you. And the other side could be. The other side said, but Your Honor, it's not just this. It's the the, the." Most judges would say, shut up, sit down, we're done here. Mm -hmm. If they didn't, and they wanted to open it up, then if one side gets to say there's more going on here, he did violate probation, then your side gets to say, oh, there's much more going on here, and we'd like to call this witness. The chances of that happening are pretty minuscule in this case. Okay. So I think asking, you could ask Brittany if you ever got an opportunity, like in an appeal, to be heard on the bigger issues, would she be willing to testify? That's a fair question. You can ask her that. Yeah. Um, but I think it's not going to happen in this case. I think it's going to wait for when the appeal is finally, finally, finally ever heard. When that day comes, you definitely going to want her to know if she did help. Because that's, the appeal is on the big Oh, is she allowed to go to the appeals? Well, I didn't think is it, if you were, if the appeal is heard, if the, if the data is granted, for a hearing. I thought it has to be, right? Right? It hasn't yet. Like you say, it's being delayed. When that day happens, Brittany could testify that all of the things that Seymour wrote in the appeal, like this is a conspiracy of the neighbors. Mm -hmm. This is a violation. Yeah. I haven't seen it. This is a violation of civil rights. This is, you know, this is a whole, you know, this whole thing, incidents was provoked then Brittany could test be also testified, no, I didn't see that incident, the original, mm-hmm. but I have seen other um, examples. Oh, well, I was told that the appeals, which originally I thought wasn't, I was told that the appeals was only about case, like court structure. Well, yes, we say the judge made a mistake in the original ruling, here's why. Oh, I thought when he said that he meant like, um, oh, two... Two closing arguments is a script. Well, that's so they can actually part, throw in an actual argument stating, he, he, look, in Kevin's defense, this is all in self-defense and blah, blah. Okay, yeah. that's what I originally thought before. Yeah, yeah, that, okay. those, there are elements of that in the appeal. Okay. Um, and he's, he, did, he, did, he, wrote, he wrote a good brief. So, okay. So, I don't think you're going to need Brittany right away, but it doesn't hurt well, to ask her. on her alert, yeah. You know, if she does that, and like I say, don't be surprised if she says no. I yeah, don't, no. not for anybody. Yeah. But you can find a forensic psychologist who does court stuff okay. as, a, as a living. Although it's probably too late. It could be too late. Well, you've got time. You don't have a date set for the appeal. so. No, but if they throw me in jail... Well, then that then the issue of violation probation violating probation is over. It doesn't have anything to do with... The only thing that's happening when you go to court next mm-hmm. is did you or did you not violate yeah, probation? Yeah, I'm saying, what the, let's say, theoretically, they say you violated probation. Right. So they're going to say, okay, now you have to go to jail, right? Or does that wait till after the appeals? No, it doesn't wait till okay, after the appeals. Okay, so separate. my point is, and this is probably why Dency did this, how does Kevin find a forensic? If she says no, how does Kevin find a forensics? If you're in jail, how do you find a person? Correct. Oh, Seymour does it for you. But I can't talk to them. Sure you can. You can call. You can talk to your lawyer from jail. No, I can't talk to the forensic psychologist. Like sure I, you can. That'll be what, your next phone in call. In jail? Yeah. Oh, but I mean, come on. You can't. What do you mean? If you were trying to have a conversation with someone in jail, it's like... It happens all the time. It's a, and it's a you already gave it to Seymour. I mean, it depends what jail... Like, like, I I was in a room of, like, if you got the, three people, it was right. a phone, oh, you're, you're like, hunched over, right. you're trying it's to, private. you're not going to have a good... Well, they'll probably ask for an, an interview, so they'll probably come to you. Yeah. But, but the other thing you do is do the alternative to treatment, then you can... Yeah, You but, just have to schedule you the... You know, uh, anyways, yeah. So, I, it's, so the, are you going to jammed up either way? I'm yes. just saying, I'm saying that... Probably, if I'm in jail, the chance of me talking to a forensic psychologist or psychiatrist is probably slim to none due, due to ergonomics uh, and long so, conversations oh, where yeah. you can get information. Yeah, no, I, oh, the so other one, yeah. Seymour giving copies of his materials that you've given him. 
to be reviewed. Yeah, well, that's a different story. And that's something, I mean, if you would like to do is go around and find someone like that and get them the information that I've given you or that's on my website. Um, remember, there's 10 terabytes of data accessible on my website. But then they can do the whole... And that's what I'm saying is that I'm one man going, please help me, I'm contacting this person, I'm giving USB sticks to news organizations, and they're all just like, yeah, whatever. And um, I can't do this on my own. I need people to say this is unacceptable. Okay, here's the thing. I work three days a week for Olive. Uh -huh. Olive pays me a lot less than I make privately. Mm -hmm. That's why I only work three days a week, and because they don't have a budget. So... I can commit to helping you through this next hearing, mm -hmm. then we have to reevaluate because I don't know if I've got the time or resources. I don't know if they'll approve. I've got 25 other clients with yeah. Olive trying to parse it out into you know, three yeah. days a week. I'm a little jammed up. It's busy season. Yeah, I, I don't understand. know why. Um, <laughs> but it's I'm just really like busy. a planet full of people. We're going to melt day and night. And it's exactly. Like <laughs> so it doesn't mean that I couldn't get you some um, ideas of names of psychologists who do court appearances. I can look. I can do that kind okay. of research. I, I can at least get you started. Yeah. And I can send you the links to these two facilities that you can show to Brittany and you can have a discussion about well, should I even bother with this alternative treatment plan? Should I even have that in the background or not? Or am I just going to take my chances and go to jail if I have to go to jail? Yeah. So, and then we'll talk on Monday. Okay. Uh, is that a good yeah. plan? Yeah. Okay. Well, before we, they have to charge us too much more, shall we walk down to our cars? Yeah. And did you get validated? Uh, I didn't work on that. Oh, you didn't. Okay. Um, Smart. <laughs> yeah. That one I brought before. Okay. Uh, 